let's <laughs> let's get rocking. Hey, all, we are here tonight with Chuck Marshall from Fans with Bands and Life in Michigan. And what else do you do? I mean, I know it's a lot. <laughs> uh, but that's pretty much it, I think. Um, I'm also putting on an event now, so I've been working on coordinating an event called uh, Gig: The Art of Michigan Music. Oh, right on. Uh, and that's happening in November. So that's been a lot of work too. So okay, yeah, yeah. That's so tell. Going on. Tell me about that event, because that sounds pretty freaking cool. Yeah, it's super cool. So that shirt you have on is kind of like the idea. So uh, awesome band, by the way, Temple of the Fuzzwitch. Love those uh, dudes, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. So the, the idea, so uh, basically it's about promoting the artists that are supporting uh, Michigan, well, music in general, but they are from Michigan, um, that support the the visual aspect of music. So the the concert t-shirts, you know, the artists that do that, the artists that do gig posters, right? Um, the artists that are taking, uh, you know, band photos and concert photos. All those folks um, that, I mean, you see every time, like, you know, you can see the wall behind me, it's got all these posters. You pick up an album, you see an album cover, and you may or may not necessarily know who that artist is. And so the idea with gig is to, Put that, make it an art show where you see that art in a, in kind of a setting that's, you know, conducive to checking out art. Um, and yeah, promote those artists. And this time we're doing it a little different. I did it years ago and it was at a gallery in, in Ann Arbor and it was strictly an art show. And this year uh, we're doing it, we're changing it up. Uh, some friends of mine from the Manchester Music Underground, they put on, um, shows in Manchester, Michigan that are more Americana uh, style folk music and stuff, uh, sometimes some rockabilly and stuff. But anyway, they I was interviewing them for Fans with Bands. I was talking with them. Uh, they're great folks. And they were like, hey, when are you going to do gig again? I'm like, you know, people have been asking me over the years. And I'm like, I don't know. It was a lot of work, you know. And uh, so I said, all right, if you guys are going to help me, we'll do it. And so they said, sure. So we're uh, so then it, it kind of snowballed. So now instead of just an art show, uh, it's a live music show. So we have got three days. So Friday night's the opening reception. You get to meet the artists. Um, you get to hang out and we will have a cash bar. Um, and then we've got live music happening on Friday night. We've got uh, on Saturday, you know, then we're coming up with other ideas like, oh, let's do some educational sessions. So we're going to have somebody coming out to do like brand marketing and talk about like how to set up an LLC because you're kind of a small business when you're in a band or an artist. For sure. So um, that kind of stuff. Uh, got uh, Joe um, Kesselring, who's from Fret Rescue, um, Southern Michigan uh, business. He's going to come out and do some guitar setup stuff and maintenance things. So we got that educational aspect. We're going to have like a, a mixer with, you know, some media folks, um, musicians, artists uh, on Saturday, uh, you know, kind of happy hour time. Mm -hmm. And then some more music. And then Sunday is a market. So all the artists that are involved in the show um, can, you know, have a table, sell, sell their art. Um, we're also inviting bands if they're, if they're interested in getting a table. Um, we can set them up with a the table there. Um, some of our sponsors are have tables. Um, and then we're also going to have hopefully some people selling instruments. We've got one um, person. She's the bass player in uh, One with the Riverbed. I don't know if you've heard of them. Mm -hmm. uh, awesome blackened death metal band from, uh, I think they're from Kalamazoo. Anyway, uh, she has a, uh, she makes her own guitars and it's called Lab Instruments. So she's going to be there. Hopefully get some more instrument makers but the market will be on set, set uh, excuse me sunday afternoon um so yeah that's that's what gig is it's uh kind of consuming my life right now so i got a great team of folks from um southern michigan that are helping out um but uh it, yeah it's been a lot of work so far but it's going to be awesome <laughs> that so that sounds really cool it's like an all-encompassing you know, like here you can get some equipment, you can check yeah. out what the artists do and get some tips on how to actually, you know, have a business. Cause yeah, you know, essentially that's, that's what it is. I think for sure. a lot of people don't really realize like it's called music business for a reason, <laughs> you know? Right. 
Right, right, exactly. You can, you can treat it like, if you treat it like a hobby, it'll cost you like a hobby. But if you treat it like a business, it'll pay you like a business. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's really cool. What what made that like come about initially for you? Uh, initially, so it was, uh, man, it's been a while now. I, 12 years ago, I started, I, I've been doing photography for since seventh grade, but I was on and off. I was um, into it quite a bit when I was younger and then got out of it and then got into music and played music for quite a few years and stopped doing photography. But anyway, uh, 12 years ago, I got more into photography and in particular, um, concert photography. So used to get my, get my kind of my, my break, like, um, my wife and I started life in Michigan. So we were doing that. Um, and I was putting some local stuff there, but for like national bands, you know, you needed to have like, you still do need to have some kind of publication you're gonna uh, promote with. So um, back then, um, Mick McDonald had put together a National Rock Review, uh, which was awesome. And he kind of gave me a start in doing that. So I'd been doing that for a few years and I was seeing the, you know, like I was talking about where folks, um, you know, you'll see it on Facebook, somebody shares a photo or something like that, but you don't really know who that photographer is. And I was yeah. seeing all these great photographers and I'd say, Hey, do you know, you know, uh, you know, so-and-so Ken settle or whatever, you know, um, he's probably not a good example because probably everybody knows him, but, um, you know, it's like, do you know these people? And I was thinking, man, somebody, we need to organize this. So that's how it kind of came about. I'm like, I just want to showcase all this art. I, I feel like, it's so cool and i don't know if necessarily people are doing it like that i haven't seen art shows like that i think there are a couple that have come up in detroit um but i was like I, i'm gonna do it i'll just put it together so. i think that's i think it's really cool right because that's yeah um it's an area that that's probably lacking i know one thing that i'm i'm drawn to um much like yourself in your in the back right yeah i love concert posters and you know, just live music in general. So the posters that go along with it, the album art, yeah. all of that. And I'm, those artists like always blow me away. Like uh, Craig know. Horky, you know? Oh yeah. Craig is fantastic. And he's doing our poster uh, this year. Right on. So he's the, he's the man. Uh, Cause I was like, you know, uh, the very first poster we did. And that first one was just the art show. Um, I don't know if you know, Nick's uh, Robert Nixon. Mm -mm. Um, he's in Detroit. He's done some great posters. He did the very first one, and and that's kind of the graphics that you see if you go to the website or the Facebook page. Okay. That's that's Nick's. He just recently did a poster for Against the Grain when they came and did a show at um, Smalls. So anyway, but Craig, I've loved his stuff. I mean, he, he's awesome in Cavalcade, but just seeing all his cool posters and, and yeah. that artwork, I was like, dude, you know, would you do it? And he's like, yeah, sure. So I'm like, you're yes. like, yes, <laughs> yeah, that's super cool. So yeah. we, uh, you know, funny story about Craig, my wife and I, um, we went to blood fest, right. With, uh, yeah. who was, I think black Dahlia murder was headlining and battle cross Fallujah, you know, yeah. a lot of really good bands. So we went to that and Craig had a booth set up and I was like, man, I really like your work. And he's like, oh yeah, that's cool. We're talking. And I, I bought a couple of his, uh, I think Melvin's posters. Oh, cool. And I got them hanging up around here somewhere. But uh, so we're talking and I go, he goes, uh, where are you from? I was like, oh, like I, I grew up here, but I, I live in uh, Louisville. Uh -huh. He goes, oh, I know some people from there. I said, oh, who? <laughs> he goes, he goes, Brian Omer. I'm like, oh, I know Omer, dude. He's a <laughs> good dude. So it was like, oh, small world. <laughs> like, it, it is kind of funny, like how that spreads out, you know, like even across the country, yeah. um, you end up meeting somebody, you like go to a, a big festival, you know, and then you'll meet somebody. And the next thing you know, you find out like, oh, shit, they know so-and-so from Lansing or whatever. And you're yeah. like, oh, well, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, especially when you get into like the music community, you know, like uh, oh, it's yeah. it seems like the world is so big. But yeah. once once you're like in it and you start talking to people, I like you're it's like the one degree of separation from almost yeah. anyone, it you is. know. Kevin Bacon is everywhere. Yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> that's like, literally, I was trying not to say Kevin Bacon, so I, I appreciate that. Yeah, you gotta you gotta embrace uh, Kevin. Yeah, Come that's on. the truth. I think he just I think he turned sixty five today. Did he? Shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. 
Well, I just turned 60 this year, so uh, yeah, he's he's got a few couple years on me, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> I still that like he wears his year as well. You wear oh, your yeah. year as well, right? You got the white <laughs> beard, think. but you don't look like you're 60. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I think I've been uh, had gray hair since I was 30. So see, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just have no hair. So yeah, well, that that too, dude. Yeah, yeah. The hair abandoned me like early on. They were like traitors, like they're at the hell out of here. God damn it. So <laughs> let, let's talk music for a minute. All right, who, sure. Who are some of like your favorite, the favorite bands that you're listening to right now? Oh, favorite bands I'm listening to right now. Um, so I would say uh, a lot of local music for mm-hmm. me. So I'm in Ann Arbor, so the Detroit area and Michigan in particular, but I'm up I would there say, often. I, I really have been enjoying the uh, new Glass Chimera, um, kind of like psychedelic rock. Okay. Um, Temple of the, of the Fuzz Witch, you yeah. know, their last album is fantastic. Apotheosis is yeah. out of this world, man. It's Yeah. Um, I'm still really uh, kind of addicted to the Cavalcade album. It, it's just so weird and wonderful. I, I don't know. I, I, I love it. The new, um, I was just at their show at, in bells uh drink their blood okay uh, kind of progressive technical band super cool and who else have i been listening to uh oh i also so i'm a huge fan of the absence mm. and they reissued like riders of the plague and they're uh, i think from the grave which is one of their first albums and um the, the those older ones i had on cd and they re- released them m i think it's M Audio, I can't remember the the, dis, the the distributor, but anyway, they have them on uh, vinyl, so I got those, and I've been flipping through those. So yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, love those dudes. Like the Absence, they were. Um, I was just talking to Jeremy, and he's like, "Oh yeah, that that project was shelved." And I I come home, and Taylor's like, "I wrote a new The Absence album." So he listens to it, and he's like, "Crap, now I got to go record drums to this." <laughs> like. So like the, you know, the latest album out of the blue. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, <laughs> I became a huge fan of theirs when I heard Riders of the Plague mm-hmm. and I was like a fanboy. They came to the token and uh, I think they even had, I don't even, uh, I can't re- remember exactly if they were offering some kind of VIP. Th- I don't think they were, but I felt like a VIP cause they were, you know, I was talking to all those dudes. Um, they were just super cool. I also met, um, Oh shit, Devin! Uh, I can't remember his last name. He's the sing. He was in, uh, not Havoc. Um, shoot, one of those uh, Oakland area thrash bands that. Oh shit! I'm gonna think of it later. But yep. uh, he he's the singer in in, in Anubis right now. Okay. Uh, and uh, so he was at that show. He was playing with somebody else though. But anyway, yeah, those guys were fantastic and so yeah when i saw that they were reissuing those albums i was like i i gotta, gotta eat them up yeah. yeah yeah i like you know i i love i grew up um uh, obviously i'm a little little younger than you um uh, <laughs> i'm coming up on 50 so you've you've got a little bit of time on me but i you know growing up in the you know the 80s there was still a big you know i feel oh, like sure. it, the height of vinyl at that time yeah it, yeah. it was everywhere, you know. I remember buying my first album. First album I got for Christmas was like White Snake, and I bought Girls, 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 and oh, I was nice. like, "Oh, this is so awesome!" You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, I love the resurgence of vinyl. It it's like I'm broke it's... because I buy so much vinyl. So you you would have been like about ten in the early eighties, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, seventy. I was like, so I'm seventy six. So like. I was, you know, early eighties, probably seven to nine ish. Yeah. 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 Cause I was just thinking like that was sort of that heyday, right? Mm-hmm. Between what CDs were like early nineties, I think. Yeah. Ninety ninety one was when it was. And then, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, I kept all my albums like that I'd bought before. Cause a lot of people sold all their shit and bought uh, CDs. And now they're all buying back the crap they sold, but yeah. I kept all that stuff. But I then bought like everything in CDs. So I got a shit ton of CDs like downstairs. Um, but I hardly listen to them because yeah. I still love the And I kept that, not the record player that's behind me. That's a newer one. But the one we have in the 
living room. That's the one I bought when I was, I don't know, 16. Oh, that's, that's like awesome. Pioneer direct drive, you know? It's like, yeah. It's still running. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I ended up, so I had, I had some original pressing beetles. I had the, oh, um, uh, creeping death, the original picture disc, oh, yeah. some of that other stuff. And yeah. probably 15 years ago, somewhere around there, uh, uh, my house burned down, burned all of that oh, stuff up with it. And oh, I was like, no, oh, no, dude, that's a bummer. So when I met my wife, I said, Hey, um, <laughs> excuse me. I said, Hey, don't buy me any vinyl. Um, I, I love it. I don't want to get like brought back into it. Like I will, I'll go crazy. And she's like, ha ha ha. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and she bought me uh what'd she buy me? She bought me a Deftones album. Nice. Oh, it was the self-titled. Cause that's, that's one of my favorite like Deftones albums. Yeah. So she bought me that and I was like, okay, now I need a record player. She's like, all right. <laughs> so we went and got a record player and then it was like, boop, boop, boop. She's oh, like, I know why are you buying records? I said, I told you don't buy me records. <laughs> you know, like it's going to snowball. <laughs> it, it's bad. <laughs> Showed my kids what they're worth the other day. And they're like, just get rid of them. And I'm like, <laughs> no, no, <I> <laughs> like I don't yeah. want to. Yeah. I got I some good records eggs. over there. It's like, yeah, hell yeah. This is what you guys are going to retire on. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no, I'm like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't even think of them as like a, I'm sure some of them are that I have are maybe worth a little bit, but I don't even think about it. It's just like, those are the albums I want to listen to. And yeah. you know, I've got some stuff I, you know, play once in a while. Um, but there's a lot that I, you know, they come out constantly. You yeah. Know, every couple of months they're coming out, you know, like forbidden. But, oh God, that's twisted into form. As soon as I got that thing, I'm like, Jesus, this is so good. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm like that with, um, with spotlights. Oh. Like the, the last album they put out, Alchemy for the Dead. Like I loved the band before, but Alchemy for yeah. the Alchemy for the Dead, I think, um, is just like such a fantastic album and it's a little bit different than everything else they did. And yeah. like I'm like I probably listen to that album three times a week. Oh, nice. Nice. Awesome. Like like love it. But <laughs> like those albums, I've got the one album that I listen to and then I have multiples of it that are like these are the collector ones like <laughs> we'll never touch those you right, know right <laughs> i used to be that way like about them when i first got into records you know back in the day you get your record and you didn't want to wear the hell out of it because you typically didn't have a a great needle and you weren't necessarily thinking about taking care of them but so i would just like play it once record it onto cassette and then just play the cassettes and then wear the shit out of the cassette and then the the album was, you know, still pristine, but now yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just, I just play them and try to treat them nicely. Just, <laughs> just do well with them and, that's right. and they'll last. I mean, that's, that's right. you know, part of the quality of, of a good needle and a good player and yeah, knowing how to take care of them, you know? Yeah. Well, I think of it sort of like, um, like musical instruments. Like when I see somebody that has guitars and they're just hanging up and you ask them if they play them and they have, Oh no, it's just there i'm like what why, why? Yeah. like play that thing at least once in a while just to pick it up and touch it i don't know but uh, i don't know so it has feelings clearly too. Yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's the truth my like yeah. my wife doesn't think i play my guitars but like i i come downstairs I'm like no one's home i play them for a little bit i'm like all right cool i'll put yeah. it away exactly yeah. Got to have some little little fun with it. That's right. <laughs> so early on for you, what what were some of the bands that that really made you realize you were drawn to music? Oh, uh, let's see. What? Uh, well, so first album I got was "Goodbye Yellow Brick Road" by Elton John. Elton John, yeah. And I think that was probably the, my you know when I was really getting into music. My parents were uh, they both listened to quite a bit of music. My mom actually played guitar and and taught music so we always had music in the house uh, it was mostly country music uh which was fine because at that time country music was cool and good you yeah. know johnny cash and waylon jennings and um 
you know, Tom T. Hall and those guys, you know, I, I would still listen to that. Um, at the time when I was younger, I really didn't think about it or care about it as much. Um, but later, it, you know, it resonated with me more. And mm -hmm. then my mom was into more, um, she like, she played steel guitar. So there was like some steel guitar music. And then there was some like more, I don't know, I guess you'd call it popish music. Um, and then uh, she really got into like uh, Stevie Wonder and that stuff. So I kind of gravitated to that as well. Um, but I think the biggest one that really had an impact on me was hearing Kiss Alive mm. and when I was like sixth grade. And that one, I think, really sparked me to want to, I, I became like just, you know, a member of the Kiss Army, basically. And, and Become obsessed. Everything Kiss forever. Yeah, for, for years until then I became in, obsessed with Rush. And then, you know, then things finally like started to evolve where I, my musical tastes, and that was probably... Uh, when I was like 17, 18, when it started to really like blossom out and get into some classic rock, but also get into like Sabbath and Maiden and stuff like that. So uh, right on. That's a good like it's a good branch, you know, uh, for me. Yeah. I think my I, I think I was always drawn to to music. Yeah. And then my first first concert ever was uh, Michael Jackson on the Thriller oh, awesome. tour. <laughs> And I don't remember Jill Lewis Arena, Cobo Hall, yeah, somewhere in Detroit. I was, I was probably seven, maybe. <laughs> I say awesome. seven or eight. It might have been six or seven. I don't yeah. know, somewhere in that. Um, I don't remember the concert. I remember going, "Oh my god, that was like the best thing ever." <laughs> you know, that's all I remember of it. Yeah. yeah, and it was, you know, from from that point on, I just went like hog wild, and it's. <laughs> <laughs> you know white snake the, you know motley crew and my, right. my my dad was a leather worker and there was a guy in wayne michigan that uh his name was dean battles stop chewing the cords please <laughs> um, and he turned me on to metal it was like iron maiden and slayer and oh nice then we had this babysitter who like metallica master of puppets and i was just like <laughs> <laughs> oh you know like the world opened yeah, up yeah that, it's so cool when somebody like introduced you to something you you know hadn't been in your wheelhouse necessarily because i remember um i was again like 16 17 when i was starting to get into like trying to like play guitar and do that and a buddy of mine went out to, to california and he came back and he had uh, I wish I could remember the guy's thing, but he had this, it was sort of like the Randy Rhodes method of playing guitar, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the dude. He was some guitar teacher in California, but it wasn't Randy Rhodes. Um, anyway, that dude had this thing and that he also listened to Al Di Miola. And so when my buddy John came back, he said, oh, dude, you got to check out Al Di Miola. I'm like, who the fuck's Al Di Miola? And <laughs> it's like, you know, you're thinking, oh, it's, the covers of the album, you're like, what? It looks like yeah. jazz, and you're like, right, this can't be good. And then you listen, and you're like, holy crap, who is this guy? You know? Yeah. And you get into that stuff, or like, uh, I remember somebody, maybe I read it in like Guitar Player, but like, uh, you know, uh, Dixie Dregs. Uh, shit, what's his name? <laughs> Plays in Deep Purple now. What the fuck's that guy's name? Oh, Lord. He's going to blank and on it. But. He's a fantastic guitar player, and I can't remember. Uh, another one that somebody popped in, which was kind of out of the blue and kind of that expansive thing. Um, did you ever listen to Michael Hedges? Mm -mm. Oh, dude. So if you if you are you know in like kind of a guitar geek, that dude is amazing. It's all it's it's acoustic music, um, okay, but instrumental in a lot of ways and super dynamic. Just fantastic sadly he i think he passed away it might have been 10 15 years ago mm -hmm. um, in a car crash but Damn. yeah anyway sam kennison <laughs> yeah yeah no shit yeah that's i don't want to talk about sam kennison that was a that's crazy it. night um <laughs> we're, we're actually i was hanging out with some friends of mine the night sam kennison died we're hanging out and it's storming uh where was i living west bloomfield and like it's storming and we're like, you know, we're kids, we're being stupid. 
like someone could die tonight. It could be anyone in the next day. Sam Kinison dies in a car crash, and we're like, what the f just happened? Like, no. Yeah. How no, could this be? No. <laughs> like, <laughs> stupid. Um, but, it, you know, have you listened to um, Andy McKee at all? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Look, like that, that dude is fantastic. Mind blowing. So that Andy McKee would be in that kind of genre, like Michael Michael Hedges. Okay. Very much, very much like that with that tapping, keeping the rhythm with your thumb and yeah. hand, you know, and then doing the taps and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Like that is like a, it, it's like a full band. Just yeah, yeah, amazing. And you're so mind blowing. Like, like I have a hard enough time just playing a song on the guitar, you know. <laughs> like, I know, throw, dude. <laughs> throw that stuff in there, and I'm like, nope, I quit. I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's it's like I always have these uh, these fantasies that one day I'll figure out how to play that or this, and it's just like nope, nope. I don't I don't think it'll happen. No, I can I've... you know hack around as as good as I get, but it's not going to be you know like you know Randy Rhodes or something like that. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I I don't have the time or energy to to put into it. There's it's like I feel right. like I I have so much going on. My day starts at five in the morning and oh to, shit. Tonight I'll I'll go to bed early, probably like nine o'clock. Yeah, like like nonstop. <laughs> so when did you start this the the podcast? Because mm. I've I've been loving it, man, and I'm appreciate uh, that. Very, very honored to be uh, part of it. But I was, you know, it's just fantastic. You've got so many awesome people you've been talking to. Like, when did it get kicked off? December. Really? Holy yeah. crap! Yeah, you've been cranking. It's yeah. awesome. I do about <laughs> like three a week. Um, Dude, that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I try to stack them up yeah. and have four or five waiting to be edited and, and what have you. And I'm yeah. being sick. I've, my padding is gone. I'm like, no, I got to do something. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, I started in December and I don't even, you know, I've always been the guy that, like, I just want to, I like talking to people. My wife, she went to a graduation today and was like, yeah. <clears throat> she goes, it's going to be hard because I don't have my, my buffer there. You know? <laughs> I was going to say, you're, you're kind of a, a, just a natural conversationalist. So it just, you know, boom, it just starts going. So, and the interviews I've watched, the same kind of thing, you know, just people just like, blah, blah, and you're just like keeping them going. And it's, it feels very, uh, natural it's very natural that's what i love is yeah. that it, it's natural as opposed to uh feeling like you got to work for it yeah well that's i appreciate that's a very good that's a great compliment i i, I greatly appreciate that because I, I i feed off of people like i am if i'm like this isolation stuff mm -hmm. it it drives me nuts makes me depressed <laughs> i have to be out yeah. talking to people why i go to concerts my wife when we first started dating she's like you don't want me to go to concerts i said well i'm gonna go to concerts i'm gonna meet some people and no, i don't want to be rude to you right i'm there right. for the music that's why i'm there and i'm gonna talk about the music yeah that's it well she thought i was gonna you know be one of those less than ethical people and, and be picking <laughs> up girls and oh <laughs> she goes to a couple shows with me and she goes, you, you don't talk to girls. I'm like, no, <laughs> I like, I literally told you yeah, like I'm there, to, <laughs> I'm there for the music to talk about the music. She's like, every time we go to a show, you leave with a new, like best friend. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Like right, my right. numbers, my phone is filled with people's numbers that, you That's know, awesome. that I've met at shows. And she's yeah. like, who is that? I'm like, Oh, I met him at, at soul fly. And, Dayton and blah 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 and she's like how do you remember this I'm like I don't know I just do you know <laughs> so it's too cool so to do the podcast and have the ability to to um you know talk to people about mm -hmm. music like it's it's such it's such a passion you know I think for both of us that yeah I don't care if I don't make any money I want to you know I just I want to do yeah, it exactly. it's something I really enjoy I have yeah. a real job you know, like, right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause it is, uh, I mean, I'm sure it's possible. Um, but I've never really thought about it, it for money. I mean, luckily we do have some folks that, 
you know, kick into uh, Life in Michigan and uh, which helps support that and fans of the bands and stuff, but it doesn't like pay my bills or anything. It just right. basically keeps the website up, you know, and pays for the software. Right. Yeah. Um, doesn't even come close to paying for my, computer, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, um, no. you know, but it's cool. It's, it's I'm not doing it for that. I'm sorry. I'm dying over here. Oh, no worries, man. <laughs> um, and I feel for folks that, um, you know, cause I know there's some, some people that are, that's what they do. They, mm -hmm. this is, they're making a living doing, you know, photography and, um, yeah, it's gotta be a tough gig. So, yeah, yeah it's like, it's, you know, it's, it's hard. And I, again, I, I do it because I, I love doing it. I'm not doing it to, to become rich and famous or anything like that. I just, I like talking. Probably my favorite thing is, is hearing about new bands to listen to. Yeah. Yeah, like, for sure almost every episode I'm like, okay, I got to check them out. Like I go back I when know. I'm editing, I'm like, write that down. Like, <laughs> you know, know, that's, I, that's the great thing is when you get the, that hot tip on some band and then you're like, Oh man, this, these guys are fantastic. Yeah. Who was, um, have you heard of blessed black? Uh, no, but I'm going to have to make a note probably now. Cause... I'll send you some stuff. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> so, they're out of uh, like North Kentucky, Cincinnati area. Mm -hmm. uh, Murphy, the guy, uh, the front man for Blessed Black was, uh, he was, God bless. <coughs> this is getting bad. Um, he was in War Curse. Okay. Oh, and, yeah. I've heard that, man. Um, so war curse was like, like thrashy mm -hmm. blessed black is not there. They're in the, in like the doom vein. Oh, cool. To me, like you listen to it and you can hear the doom, but I just, it's really good. Like rock and roll. Oh, nice. Awesome. <laughs> like the songs you want to sing along with. Yeah. Um, they're working on a series right now called the seasons and they've done what they're doing is like in a season, they write and record this EP. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be four volumes at the end of it. They've got, they just released the second one. Everything they've released. You listen to the first, first album till seasons volume two. And you see this, this progression and how Murphy has, um, he's found his feet as a vocalist and a front man. Holy shit. It's mind blowing. Good. Awesome. Cool. I got to check it out. Then. <laughs> <coughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry about that, dude. No, it's good. I did not anticipate being sick. <laughs> Such is life. Yeah. Got to stay hydrated, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if only that was it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they just played some shows with uh, Temple of the Fuzzwitch, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah. That would, uh, so that sounds like that would be a good uh, combination. I'm going to have to check them out. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Because yeah, cause Temple, you know, they do some traditional singing. They've gotten a little more blackened mm -hmm. uh, in their, their new album, but the, the music's killer. The vocals are killer, too. I like it. I like the whole thing. Yeah. So that, like... I haven't listened to much of their stuff before Apotheosis, but like Apotheosis, I'm listening to it and I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Their earlier stuff is more Sabbath oriented, you know, okay. so his singing is, is cleaner, um, little, not like a, a Sabbath ripoff, but mm -hmm. it's more in that vein. Right. So you think of like candle mass and stuff like that. So, okay. um, but yeah, I think the new album is is where they're where they're where they're headed. I, I like that vein. I like I like how they're how they've uh, progressed. Yeah, it's it's real unique to me, right? You listen to yeah. a lot of Doom, and they don't have like the the more black metally vocals and and what have you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it really stands out and grabs you, and the the song crafts are really really the way they're crafted are really well crafted. Yep. 
Yeah. I ran into um, Joe, bass player at High on Fire. Oh, really? Awesome. Yeah. I was oh, like, where's, where's the rest of the guys? He goes, oh, we had a, <laughs> we played uh, Chaos and Carnage out at the Crowfoot. We played an hour ago and I just drove here. I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn. That's awesome. <laughs> I would have loved to go see them again. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, I, saw, I saw them in uh, Jackson last fall, I think. Yeah. It was great with Throne. Oh, oh right on. Yeah. Those dudes. Yeah. I like those dudes too. Hell yeah. Have you, awesome. uh, Nathan sent me his, uh, sent me some of their new stuff not come out yet. Oh, nice. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. What? They're, they're ridiculously good. <laughs> yeah. You know, Michigan, uh, has got a lot of really, really like good, solid bands. Hell yeah. I mean, we've got seriously really awesome I mean, across the genres, but metal, I think. Mm -hmm. Some really killer metal bands. Yeah. Um, like I was mentioning that one with the riverbed. If you like blackened, like atmospheric metal, mm -hmm. um, that band rules. So good. Uh, another one I saw, uh, I mentioned Drink Their Blood. Um, and we've talked about Cavalcade. Uh, Flood the Desert is a instrumental band. Okay. Um, Although they do have vocals on there, I should say that it feels instrumental because some of their songs are like 14 minutes. They're kind of progressive, <laughs> you know, it's sort of like, uh, like rush on steroids. Like, okay. But with maybe the, um, the dudes from Mastodon being involved. So there's kind of a Mastodon feel, um, with just hyper guitar playing, hyper bass playing, you know? Uh, so you feel like you're, combining those worlds but right on re really cool really cool band I really like uh imminent sonic destruction oh yeah those guys like like those dudes are really good and then even finality oh yeah finality <laughs> is fantastic good like lord yeah i yeah. I talked to someone and they're like ah you're not gonna like them and i'm like <laughs> okay you know like yeah. so i i go in with these really low like expectations like it's going to suck. It's going to be terrible. And I listen to it. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> like this doesn't suck. This is so freaking good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why, why would you tell me they suck? Yeah. Super powerful. Well, you know, I'm thinking maybe because, um, you know, Tony's singing as opposed yeah. to it being like battle cross where it was more, you know, Tony on uh, guitar. Metal, right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, if you were into battle cross and, and the vocals from battle cross, you would, Maybe not necessarily get into finality, but the music, uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, I think um, so. But too. I like the whole package. I think it's, yeah, I think they're a great band. Um, that reminded me of like Amongst These Acid Ashes. Oh, yeah, Among These Ashes. Yeah, among, yeah, those guys. Yeah, ass. yeah, they're really good. Uh, god, there's another one. Oh, even like Nethergate's really good too. Oh, yeah, hell yeah, because Kyle does. I mean, he's in like seven or eight or nine yeah. projects now. He is. Like, yeah. He's, uh, yeah. Among these ashes, he's in another gate and something else, I think too. Or right? worm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's in a, he's in a band called stank, I think. <laughs> uh, and he's got some other ones. He's got some other ones going. I don't really remember the names of them, but he's like, yeah, yeah. I, I just play live in this one. And this one's just fun. And I'm like, how do you like? Yeah, keep it all straight, right? Yeah, because I'd be like, "Yeah, what am I playing? Hold on, <laughs> wrong band. Sorry, yeah. you know what I mean." I wonder if that does happen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I would I would think so, but yeah, you start the song, you go, "Oh shit, this isn't these guys." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wrong band. That sets tomorrow night. Right, shit. right. Like, oh man. That, no, I think he's getting ready to do a. a uh, what he's calling wag fest where all of his bands are playing one night <laughs> like oh man that's gonna be awesome <laughs> it's gonna be he's gonna be exhausted dude right right i can't imagine it was yeah especially i mean he's not you know he's not kidding around when he's playing the drums no that no and he's going 100 miles an hour and he's solid you know yeah, he's not yeah. like he's not a half-assed player which is really no. nice to see you know yeah yeah takes it real serious um, so Michigan's got a bunch of festivals coming up. 
over the next few months. That's right. You got some that are interesting to you? You know, there's uh, there's definitely some that are interesting. It's just I'm not going to be around to check them out. So mm. I think uh, I was really bummed because, uh, is it Havoc Fest? Um, it's happening in Jackson, and Kitty's going to be mm -hmm. the, the, uh, Headliner. the main band. Yeah, I was bummed because I wanted to see them. Um, but I, where the fuck am I going to be? I can't remember. Uh, I won't be there. Oh, I'll be at Burning Foot. So I, I am into festivals. I am going to festivals, but they tend to be beer festivals. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, so as far as music, the only one is the one I'm putting on, really, which isn't technically a festival. but Kind of um, is. Yeah, I guess you could call it a fest. Um, yeah, I can't think of any that I'm going to go to, though. You should come out to Michigan Metal Fest. Yeah, when is that? August 24th. Oh, yeah. See, that's the same weekend as the Havoc one. Oh, that's, oh yeah, that's, that's right. That's the weekend I'll be at Burning Foot, so, which is uh, a – it's just one day. Um, the one day – it's over in Muskegon, right on the beach. They have music, but it's – you know, it tends to be music. It's not necessarily my thing, but it's still fun, And but it's mostly about beer. But now they have uh, Michigan Craft Distillers there, Michigan Craft – uh the cider folks and the wine folks and the beer folks so it'll be a it'll be a good time <laughs> that'll be fun for yeah. sure yeah so you're you're into the craft beers huh oh yeah for a long time i've got uh trying to think when did i get into that it was um, shit 96 maybe 94 95 mm. um went out to seattle to that was like at the tail end of grunge, right? Mm -hmm. um, just wanted to go out there and um, didn't really see any bands, but we did go to the, I think one of the like clubs, it was uh, the Crocodile. Um, so we ended up, but anyway, when we were out there, that's where I found like uh, Pete's Wicked Ale and Sierra Nevada. And in the Seattle area, they had a brewery called Red Hook. And I got just like, oh, you know, Beer, cause up to then it was like Labatt's Blue or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you were super cheap, you were getting, you know, the 30 pack of Strohs or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it was just about to drink something, right? Not necessarily think about how it tastes. And when I got it, tried those, I was, you know, this is so good. So it, that kind of started that journey. And then I've been kind of a fan of the craft beer scene ever since and um, started going to the breweries and um, the beer fests, and we actually are allied members of the Michigan Brewers Guild. So I go to the festivals and take their pictures and send them out, and that's just a ton of fun. It's almost more more fun than drinking the beers. Is just take pictures of people having fun, you know. And they typically, you know, have some bands and stuff, but it's uh, it's definitely really cool. I've made a lot of friends there. Almost, it's it's very similar, you know, and as far as like music, because you got a craft, right? Music mm -hmm. or beer. And you get people who are really dedicated and passionate about those things. And a lot of, you'd be surprised how many, um, maybe it isn't surprising, maybe it's just me, that, you know, a lot of these folks are into music mm -hmm. and or metal. Like there's so many breweries like Ogma Brewing and Jackson. Those dudes are totally into metal. You go right into on. their place, listen into it. Uh, I remember at Dark Horse, they used to have a bunch of metal, uh, stuff going on there um trying to think oh speciation is one in grand rapids totally about metal they've had some great shows there too and uh up in the even up in marquette the cognition brewery mm -hmm. um those uh, the brewer chris there he actually like almost all the beers that they make are named after a song from a band and he's oh, right into, on. yeah he's into like uh sort of like either electronic technical like death or some atmospheric you know black metal or some kind of other obscure uh metal band and he's like done collabs with some of those guys and they've come up to the brewery and they brew some beer so oh that's I, I cool. Think it's cool yeah 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 i think i think everything has its community you know and to know when those communities overlap like beer you know yeah. and metal yeah Hell well, no, like, I feel like it's hot sauce and metal. 
are like, <laughs> yeah, right, man. <laughs> like, like was, par- you're in uh, Kentucky, uh, yep. so you were in, well, it'd be a little bit of a drive, but they have Dark Lord Day, you know, uh, Three Floyds. Yeah, they just had that uh, last. Lion Fire was there, I think. Yeah, so was uh, a, a, bat, a bat, I think. Yep. What was that last weekend or weekend before? Yeah, the 18th, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was very cool. Was that Indianapolis? I think it's Munster, Indiana. Yeah, I so say. I think it's about three hours away. Oh, yeah, that's a, kind of a cruise. Yeah. That's an overnighter. <laughs> no. <laughs> no? No. Holy shit. Do you, you seriously would go three hours to go to a show and drive back? I have multiple times. Really? Yeah, we went to, uh, so Quicksand was playing in Columbus, Ohio. Uh-huh. And uh, Spotlights was playing that show and they got added last minute. And I called a buddy of mine. I was like, hey, you want to go to this? Like, I have a couple of tickets. And he said, yeah, cool. (laughs) So we like hopped in the car, drove up, which is three hours away. We hung out for the show, waited like uh, so I don't I don't drink anymore. But we hung out for the show. Yeah. Quicksand got off. I got a set list, gave it to him, was like, here, dude. And he was like, holy shit, that's cool. And we <laughs> drove home. Oh, my God. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I've done two hours, like, drove to, like, Fort Wayne um, and Grand Rapids for mm-hmm. shows. But, dude, sometimes you're just, like, so tired. You know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. especially if it goes late, like, 1230, and then you're getting home at, like, 3, and you're like, fuck, stay yeah. awake. <laughs> I know. Like so I did Nashville was like that for uh they're about two and a half hours away. Uh-huh. and I went to Mastodon Gojira Lorna Shore. Nice. That was a good show. Yeah, it was a great show. And I'm like heading home. I'm like falling asleep. Like, okay, hold on, get out, do some jumping jacks, push right. ups. Okay, I'm gonna make <laughs> this, you know, it's not that far. That's but right. I I did that one solo, so it made it a little more challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least if you have like a buddy with you. Yeah. Cause a lot of times I'm my, uh, Brenda's not into metal, so I'm usually going by myself. Um, but yeah, if you had somebody there to kind of chatter with you or at least say, dude, you're fucking go- getting off the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. That's right. <laughs> uh, it's, it's always, I always try to, I often purchase an extra ticket and I'll just offer it like, Hey dude, you want to go to a show? Yeah. Yeah. And they're awesome. like, are you sure? <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> like, come on, it's it's fun to enjoy it. It's better to enjoy it with someone, you know? For sure, for sure. It's like creating memories with your friends. Yeah, yeah. We just had a good one pop up uh, today. We went to Sonic Temple last year with some friends of ours. Uh, uh-huh. they're, they're, they live in Canton, and they brought their kids down to Columbus we drove up to Columbus and like all of us and our kids like just went <laughs> went like bumming around it was like Deftones and Foo Fighters and yeah yeah you know a lot of really good uh bands that day they're like what? that used to be called Rock on the Range didn't yeah it? yeah because I I went to it back then when it was Rock on the Range where yeah I had to I had to protest uh because I had some friends that were we went like a group like that and I don't know what year it was, but it was, uh, but Kid Rock was one of the mm. the featured ones. And I'm like, fuck that guy. So yeah. I ended up going, sitting on, because they were all like, oh, they're so excited. They're down in the thing. I'm like, fuck this bullshit. I'm going up in those uh, bleachers over there. And, you know, when you fuckers are done, uh, and I just, you know, sat and drank a beer and, you know, randomly flipped off the stage every once I'm, in a while. I'm going to enjoy my <laughs> beer and hate this fucking music. Right, exactly. But, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, who are some of your, like your favorite bands to see live? Oh, to see live. Well, so you mentioned uh, two of them, Mastodon, Gojira. Mm. Uh, who else to see live? Um, man, like current bands or bands that I've seen? Just, just in general. Uh, well, seeing Metallica was awesome. You know, way back in the day was awesome. Um, I'm trying to think of like, who, oh, uh, Primus. i I've probably seen them, I don't know, five or six times. And every time it's been awesome. And the different flavors of less Claypool, you know, mm-hmm. so uh, the Claypool Lennon Delirium or the uh, Frog Brigade, you know, so gone to those. Been, those have been really good. Um, 
have really enjoyed seeing, I mean, I know it's a kind of a diversive or divi divisive band sometimes, uh, Tool. Mm. Uh, have always enjoyed seeing those guys. Um, even, you know, though Maynard, you know, has his things where he doesn't really want to, it doesn't feel like he really wants to engage with you. Yeah. Um, it, it, I don't know. I, I just like the music, so it's been fantastic. Um, but as far as like other shows, man, I, there's been so many awesome ones that I've seen. Um, I feel kind of privileged to have, you know, for my being my age, I've been able to be at some of those early shows when bands are just getting started, you know, yeah. so being able to see like Iron Maiden warm up for 38 special mm. or, um, you know, Iron Maiden Priest, you, you know, back in 82 or something like that, or see, you know, Randy Rhodes and see, uh, you know, Def Leppard open up for, you know, back when they were like high and dry era. So, and then seeing Metallica open up for Ozzy and stuff like that. So there's been so many and uh, Black Sabbath, you know, so yeah, there's a, just a huge list, you know, the Deftones, Alice in Chains, seeing those guys and uh, at St. Andrews. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was so good. And seeing Inge Malmsteen there. Wow. Uh, when he first, when his rising force came mm -hmm. out and, uh, yeah, it was crazy. It was just a bunch of dudes, you know, cause it was, I don't think any chicks were into it. There was just <laughs> all these sweaty dudes. It's like a hundred degrees in there. Or we're all shirtless. It's, uh, it was the, the definition of uh, sausage fest sausage fest <laughs> <laughs> like you're like it's all dudes and all i could think yeah. is like sausage fest <laughs> like <laughs> exactly <laughs> like but how you know but how cool is it to to be able to see shows and and you know you mentioned uh st andrews hall but they've like that place they've changed that a lot they, they've oh, yeah. redone it man it's really freaking nice now it is yeah because that upstairs that that upstairs bar I don't know if you've been up there, but mm -hmm. that used to be a green room. Like mm -hmm. uh, years ago, I was uh, I had a friend who who did um, Epitaph magazine. I don't know if you remember that in the Detroit area, mm -hmm. and he um, also was doing like a cable access show, and we ended up interviewing the the guys in COC. Um, but it was in that space, and now that's this really nice bar. Um, but yeah, St. Andrews is a great place. That's a great venue. Um, and, uh, the Fillmore used to be the state theater years ago. Yeah. And that place has really changed. Um, but, but it's a good place to go see a show. It's bigger, obviously, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, uh, we went to a Tigers game last year and, and someone was, was playing at the Fillmore and I was like, oh shit. Well, I wish, oh, was it, <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember who it was. Like I thought I I was like, oh, maybe it was like Stevie Nicks or something. Yeah. And I was like, shit. If I'd have known that, I'd have skipped the Tigers game and went to the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's some good venues over there. The sanctuary, obviously, mm -hmm. over in Hamtramck. I love that place. Uh, so that's that's one of those places I've not been to yet. Yeah, it's it's you know, smallish, obviously, but yeah. um always have killer sound. Um, good beer prices if you drink, and uh, even if you don't, it's you know things are reasonably priced as far as beverages. It's, That's nice. Know, trying to gouge you. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, they're just really. I think the ownership of that place is really passionate about about music and putting on shows and getting locals like on a touring package. You know. Yeah. Uh, without gouging them and you know doing the sell eighty five tickets. I mean they they do sell some tickets, but it's not like the you know the kind of the guarantee where you've got to sell this or you're not getting paid. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I think they're passionate about that. And I think it comes through the folks that work there are cool. So that's I what like I, it. you know, I've heard a lot of really good things about sanctuary and it's, it's like, well, shit, man, that's one of those places that I, that I'd like to get to. Like when uh, Vader origin and inhuman condition came through, oh, I was like, I man, know. like I got, <laughs> I've got to make that show, got to make that show. And I, something yeah. happened and i was like shit like i can't make that show and i know i was out of town because i really wanted to see in human condition they've been in town i don't know two or three times and every time i'm like why the fuck does this keep getting scheduled when i hear i know <laughs> like every every time they like when they did the the deicide cataclysm tour i was yeah. like 
I gotta, I gotta get that show. And same thing. It was like, ah, <laughs> I got something going on. I can't make that damn show. Like I have my tickets and I can't even go. I know. Um, yeah. I just told Jeremy, I was like, dude, can I get an inhuman condition show here? Like <laughs> I'll pay you. Just come to my house and play. He's like, all right, whatever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, yeah. like, come on. I, I, like, I love the band. I've got all their freaking vinyl. I've got, I don't know, probably like three copies of every awesome. album they have. Awesome. Like, I love you guys. I just yeah. want to see you. Yeah. Th that band is, uh, yeah. And I, you know, I was, I was surprised how, um, I don't know why I was surprised, but Jeremy just sounds awesome. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a killer drummer, like just flat out. Awesome. Yep. And, uh, to hear him sing, he's super talented. Oh yeah. I mean, you, you look at, look at what he's done too, right? The absence, yeah. uh, just, you know, played with Venom Inc for a bit. Yep. Um, and that Slipknot thing was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, he but, was in that other uh, Necromancing the Stone. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. That's, that's actually when I, when I like, became acquainted to him because he was. Oh. They were doing um, it was Battlecross Legion Necromancing the Stone on the Winter Warriors tour. Yeah, that was at the Token. <laughs> I saw him the night before in Dayton. Okay. Like I, I drove up to Dayton, saw that show. Yeah. Drove up to Detroit and did the Token and like. Like that bill was freaking awesome. It was start to finish. Fantastic. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this and probably have to edit this out, but I've I heard, <laughs> I heard there might be some necromancing the stone stuff going on. Oh man. That would be so cool. I love that stuff. I, um, it, I, is it on vinyl? I don't think it is. Uh -uh. Yeah. That would, I would, I would love to have that on vinyl. Good yeah. God. Me yeah. too. <laughs> Like yeah. I'm, I'm tempted to call Metal Blade and be like, "Hey, can I <laughs> can I license that? Just do like ten right. copies of it." Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's so many like albums like that that came out. Um, oh, speaking of that, there's a uh, a label, Dystopian Dogs. Have you, hmm. have you heard them? Hmm. Uh, I think they're in Detroit. Um, I'm almost positive, and he, and he's he's going back and getting some of these more obscure um, metal bands and like putting out their albums. Um, like, do you know Sean Peters, who used to be in, or is in Cavalcade? He's the singer in Cavalcade. I do not. Um, he was in this band Wastelander, which was a uh, different genre, but super cool. And uh, I don't know if they did, if they were re-releasing -re Summon albums. Um, so way back, this is way back machine, as far as Michigan history, when they... Uh, Michigan Death Fest. I don't know if you remember hearing about that thing. I do, yeah. Uh, that was phenomenal. And Summon was one of those bands along with like Lucifer's Hammer. They were just like the very early, like when you think of like the beginnings of black metal and, you know, the basically the Norwegians and stuff. But it, they were like some of the first people that kind of got into that in the United States. And they they were, um, they were really well ahead of their time. They, it's crazy you know some of it's, the recordings are kind of lo-fi because it was you know back in the 80s but super cool super awesome stuff and that's I can't awesome remember if, if he's distributing somebody is distributing that stuff i know dystopian dogs is doing some of that too but I, I, where i was going with that is like yeah there's sometimes you have like some smaller band you listen to or some album that you really liked that's on cd only and you're like man i've somebody just put out like 10 of those and I'll take two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly it. Like the, uh, backbreaker records, I think is another one, right. Going to find the stuff that wasn't necessarily released on vinyl and doing a yeah. vinyl release. They just did those three, uh, battle cross. Yeah. All the battle those cross are awesome. Albums. Yeah. I, yeah. Which I've got to give those away. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two sets, one to give away and one for me. Oh, awesome. So I'm like, Man. I started teasing it in like the, the battle cross fans group. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta do more and get them out there. I'm so I'm going to give those away and I'm going to give away the finality CD with those. Oh, uh, cool. Very cool. So, I, you know, like those dudes, the dudes in both bands are just all really, really good dudes. And yeah, I want, I want more people to listen to this shit. Like, come on. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Come on, let's, let's throw I, a party. I, I felt, yeah. I felt like uh, 
like just jumping for joy when I saw that the Battle Cross stuff was issued, being you know released on vinyl. I'm like, yes, finally. I know, I mean, me too. CDs, but I was just like, this is so good. Yeah. yeah and they sound like, great. They do. Yeah. Uh, my wife's like, are you really going to order those? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you really have to ask me? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah. Like, it'll go on that card. I don't have any money right, right now. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't care. I'll get it. Um, yeah. That su I was super happy because I, I that was the entire time I I knew the guys I was like dude we should you should put these on vinyl like I'm yeah. I really want to hear these on vinyl so I think the guys in Backbreaker did a really good job releasing them the the packaging is real nice and you know the vinyls are are nice and pretty and yeah yeah no I think they did a beautiful job the you know the artwork looks great you know that like you said the pressings yeah very cool. And they sound good. I mean, that's most critical, but yeah, yeah. The, the, they're beautiful to look at and they sound awesome. And they sound awesome. Like you, <laughs> you don't get better than that, right? Yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> like I, I really like that, that uh, people are doing that licensing the music and going back and re-releasing to, to put it out because uh, nerds like us, right? Like <laughs> we right. need the vinyl, you know? Yeah. Well, and I think it, you know, there's, when you go to like record stores now, you, you know, I, I don't know if there's, well, I think there is, I think there's still um, quite a few kids that are getting into heavy metal and yeah. hard rock and that kind of stuff. And, you know, they're going to the record stores and they pick, and they may have not, well, probably never heard of battle cross. And then they see this cool album, like, a, you know, like w back when I was like very first maiden album, had no idea what the hell that was. I just saw the cover. And I was like, this is super cool. My buddy, we were like, um, all right, we're, we were both like experimenting. We we're like going to get something we would looked at, but never really heard. Yeah. I picked up Sabotage by Black Sabbath and he picked up uh, Killers. And there you go. And we we're like, holy shit, you know, it's a, it was a gold mine. So I got to imagine that there's a kid going to some record store today and he sees, you know, somebody's got the, either they bought the store bottom or somebody resold their album. I don't know why they would do that, but right. Uh, there's, there's battle cross. And they're like, Hmm, this cover looks cool. It looks heavy. What is it? Put it on. Boom. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, those were the days you go in and you look for <laughs> like, I want the cool artwork. Yeah. Like, and then you hope the music's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you're yeah. like, Oh man, that artwork is so awesome. You get home and you're like, Oh, that music is terrible. I know. What did yeah. I do? Cause I, that, I, I actually thought meatloaf was going to be heavy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like the bad hell cover. It looks awesome. Right. You think, Oh, this should be something metal. -y. Nope. So <laughs> I made a mistake. I was going to buy a Slayer album and, uh, they did, they did an album. It was uh, Slayer live undead. And then the undead did an album live Slayer. <laughs> I got the undead album and I was like, this is not Slayer. What the <laughs> hell is going on? And, and I looked and I'm like, Oh, I know um, what I did. I mean, yeah. it was still a good album, but I, I was like, damn, I really wanted that Slayer album. You know, yeah. <laughs> now I gotta, I gotta go find a way to make some money so I can go back and get it. That's right. That's right. Those were the days. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are the dates for gig? Uh, gig is happening November 8th, 9th, 9th and 10th, uh, this year. So, okay. Yeah. And you guys have a location for it? Yes. It's at art six, three, four, and that's located at six, three, four North mechanic street. And it's in Jackson so, rock and roll. Yeah. So we'll be happening in Jackson. We've got some cool sponsors, which includes experience Jackson, Ogma Brewing and Dawn Foods right now. Okay. Looking for more sponsors, but we've got those guys on board. Manchester Underground Music is sponsoring. Life in Michigan is sponsoring. And we're also partnering up with the Michigan Music Alliance. So. Oh, right on. Yeah. Right on. Well, yeah, I might, it'll be might, fun. might talk to you about a sponsorship there. Oh, cool, dude. And you should definitely come out, hopefully. Um, we've got some good bands playing both Friday and Saturday nights. Um, the I'll be announcing artists soon, but we've got about, uh, I think it's 23 different artists from um, Michigan, pretty much South, you know, Southern Michigan, because, you know, it's harder for 
folks up north that didn't necessarily come all the way down to Jackson. Um, Especially really in November. Great, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully the first weekend, you know, you know, with global warming, maybe it'll be 70. So that'll right. be good. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, no, yeah. Craig is our featured artist. He, he's doing the poster. Uh, he'll, he'll be doing the t-shirts as well. But we've got a lot of great folks and great photographers. So it'll be cool. Awesome. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Is there awesome. a cost for entry? Uh, we still need to set our ticket prices. So okay. they, there will be a, a small charge um, just to help us pay for the bands. And um, ideally, we'd like to, you know, well, we don't want to cause our artist any, um, uh, you know, other distress than their or prints. Whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah you want to, you know, not have to make it super expensive or anything. So yeah. uh, hopefully it won't be, it won't be expensive, but there will be a ticket price. So we'll have that soon. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm super interested to see that. Cool, um, man. Chuck, I greatly appreciate your time. This is a fucking great conversation, <laughs> dude. Yeah, dude. Thank you so uh, much. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you, you've turned me on to some stuff that now I've got to really go dig into because. <laughs> well, you too. I got to go check out that. Uh, uh, Blessed Black. Black. Blessed Black. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I'll, I'll send it to you here right okay. now. That way I don't cool. forget. All right. Yeah. Awesome, man. Cool. Have a great night, man. All right, dude. Thanks. See ya. See ya man.